So it, get, it, it gets released with basically, you know, roughly a two-month lag. And that compares to the quarterly net overseas migration data, which is on a six to nine month lag. So, you know, we're, we're in September now and we still don't have net overseas migration numbers. Uh, the, the last reading we got was in the fourth quarter of last year. So it's, you know, nearly nine months old. So as a result, us economists, we tend to use this net permanent long-term arrivals data to get a read on where migration is going. And what that measures, it basically measures border movements. So when someone arrives, they they sign a passenger card and they stay whether they, they say whether they want to... Uh, whether they intend to come in permanently or on a long-term basis. And historically, the net permanent long-term arrivals data, which is produced monthly, tracks the net overseas migration numbers very closely, which is why we use it as a leading indicator. Mm. And look, it also makes the point in practical terms too, unless someone's a short-term tourist, if you're here in Australia for any length of time, you, you know, need a way to get around, you need a house to live in, you're possibly doing some sort of work... And often, as we do in this country, not every country does, you can come in as a non-permanent migrant, you might be a student or something, and you can migrate your way or shift across to being permanent over time. So I think it's very, very valid. So were you surprised that the Bureau of Statistics raised this as an issue? Yeah, absolutely. 